I've had this rotary table quite a few years now. Um, I think it's one of the it's one of the early ones. Um, it's never been uh, of, uh, of satisfactory use. Every time you used it, it used to bind in one area. Uh, you could never rotate the table smoothly. No matter how much adjustment you did with the eccentric uh, arm, it, it it was never uh, it was never any any good. I thought, well, it's time I had a look at this because I needed to do a little job, so I decided to strip it down. And after examination, I found the worm wheel to be badly worn. And it was on the bottom edge of the worm wheel where the wear was, it was quite severe. And it looked to me like that the worm was only engaging on the uh, the, the edge of the, uh, the wheel instead of in the centre. So I stripped it down and uh, decided I'd uh, move the worm wheel out with, on small blocks just to see if it would improve uh, uh, the action. By extending it out further, it was hoped that the worm, we uh, the worm would engage the worm wheel more or less in the centre, and uh, I was hoping this would in improve the uh, the action of the rotation of the table. After I mounted it on the uh, small blocks to extend the worm wheel out, I put the whole lot in the uh, the forge jaw and trued everything up. Everything was concentric, so that when it was placed back in the um, the body of the table, um, the worm wheel had engaged correctly. It was at this point I suddenly realised that the, the actual cause of the trouble was that on one side of the worm wheel the teeth were shallow and on the other side they were deep. It had been cut eccentrically, out of true, and there was no way that the worm could engage correctly with the worm wheel. This is the reason why the worm wheel has been damaged. What's happened that is that the worm has engaged on the deep part of the worm wheel and as you've rotated, as, well as I rotated it, when I found it being a bit stiff and tight, I've just carried on, not realising that as it goes into the um, the shallow part, it binds and, and it stripped the teeth. That's what's happened. Then as it comes round and gets to the uh, deeper part of the teeth, it's free again. At this point, I was not really sure what was the best thing to do to try and uh, rectify the problem. Uh, replacing the worm wheel was out of the question. You just can't get the things. There's no spares. So I really was not sure what I was going to do next. The approximate angle of the teeth cut in the worm wheel is 4 degrees, so I mounted the worm wheel in my dividing head and adjusted the angle to 4 degrees. What I did then when uh, the worm wheel were mounted, I got my dial indicator and for the first tooth I got an approximate level setting. You can never get it perfectly level on a gear cut at an angle, but it was very, very close. What I did next was to make a profile cutter on my tool and cutter grinder to, to match the profile on the worm wheel. I double checked that the, uh, the form cutter matched the profile on the worm wheel and then proceeded to machine all the teeth. I started with the deepest part of the teeth so that when it got round to the finish, it, uh, it deepened the, uh, the shallow cut teeth and evened things out, hopefully.
Cutting of the teeth came out reasonably well. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it. I've remounted it on the spacer blocks to extend the worm wheel further out so that the, the worm engages more in the middle of the uh, of the wheel. Um, if, if everything works out okay, I'll machine off the damaged part. I uh, I, I shall then uh, I shall make a proper uh, spacer. I have some alloy uh, bar, and hopefully this will do. I will now um, reassemble the whole caboodle and see how it goes. I found reassembling this uh, this base plate to take up the uh, the end play on the table. I found it very very fiddly. Not um, not a really good way of uh, adjustment. Could be improved. Well, this is a vast improvement. There's no binding, and the, at the moment there doesn't seem to be any uh, backlash. A lot better, a lot better. A lot smoother, a lot easier to turn than it's ever been. There's just a tad, tiny little amount of backlash, just a little bit. And I think with a little bit of adjusting it'll be okay. Yeah, really pleased with this. Yeah, must look for that piece of um, alloy now to make a spacer and uh, machine up um, a proper spacing piece. Well, dug out my piece of alloy bar, but as luck would have it, too small. Guarantee it. Luckily, I found a piece of cast iron, and this should do the trick. It's almost exactly the size of the uh, worm wheel so it's just a tad undersized which won't make any difference so i'll go ahead and uh, machine a spacer for this and we should be back in business then The space of finish machine now with the, a registry on on both uh, sides. Just a nice fit, perfect. And that now should, um, after drilling, will lo locate nicely into the uh, the base of the table. Here we see the uh, space are all drilled, all finished. I use these uh, five millimeter stainless steel capped screws to attach the uh, the worm wheel to the base and spacer. Uh, the quality of the screw is really good for the price. I was not too keen on the way this uh, thrust plate was adjusted. Uh, adjusted. Um, it took forever, uh, a lot of fiddling. Uh, to get the thing right um, and I'm sure there could be an easier way really anyway what I decided to do was to fit a PTFE uh, washer underneath uh, I had some bar but uh, when I got the bar out I found it was a bit small in diameter so what I did I parted off a, a thin washer uh, about a millimeter thick and I then cut it into four sections and laid it into the recess in the base of the table. After the thrust washer was uh, adjusted and tightened up, everything seemed to work uh, smooth. It, uh, it was a lot easier than the other way. Um, I will see how it goes. If there's anywhere on the, uh, the pads, it can be soon taken up. 
the only other thing I had to do was just to take a small amount off the thrust pad to take it below the level of the uh, base. Take two. <clears throat> well, that's the um, the rotary table all put back together again now, um, and that's with the uh, PTFE pads which I uh, put in the uh, under the thrust plate. Uh, I've tightened everything up now, adjusted it all, it's locked up and uh, everything's working okay. It's as smooth as silk now, it's never ever been like that before, I could never really turn it as easy um, and it's made a big difference. Uh, I also um, extended the worm wheel further out into the body so that the worm engaged more in the middle of the worm wheel which uh, as you know I had to re-cut. Uh, I'm a bit wary at cutting that um, because worm wheels are cut at an angle um, either helical or spiral, I can't rem can remember which but um, it's only a very slight angle so we're clocking it up like I did um, to getting it reasonably parallel and re-cutting it it works out fine um, I cut all the way around and evened out all the teeth and everything panned out okay and it hasn't made any difference, it engages properly it, it's, it's nice and smooth I can still um, you can still uh, unlock it and, and free the uh, the worm from the uh, the body no problem all the years I've had this I've never been able to do that uh, the, the dimensions on the on this particular rotary table when I bought it they were a bit iffy really I wasn't right sure whether it would be any good um, because it's, it's had trouble from day one Fortunately, the, ta the table top and the base are all parallel, everything's square. It was just that the worm would not engage properly. And um, as it engaged in the shallow part, uh, uh, the deep part of the teeth, by the time you got round to the um, the shallow part, uh, everything tightened up, and, uh, and that's what's damaged the teeth by just forcing it that little bit further back, round rather, it's, it, it's, it's damaged the teeth. So we're, we're deepening everything, making everything e even now, it's, it's, it works out really nice. What I plan to do now really is um, is to invest in a, a set of uh, dividing head plates, a conversion kit, you can convert it into um, a dividing head, so I might do that. They're not right expensive, you can get them on eBay, there's plenty of them about. And then I've got best of both worlds, and I've got a, a, a little dividing head plus a rotary table. Um, I do. I, I mean, I still will use my own my old dividing head. It's uh, it, the trouble is with that. It's it's heavy. It's a heavy lump to move. It's an old one, and I've had it a lot of years, and it's it's quite a good quality one, really. Um, it's made by uh, the Victoria Machine Tool Company. And they were well known for uh, for manufacturing milling machines, but the thing's heavy. And my Tom Senior Miller, although it's an industrial class of milling machine, I think it's just a little bit too heavy for it. Uh, probably, it, probably it's okay. It's done over years, but I'm always a bit wary of putting a lot of weight on uh, on, on the table. So this will um, this this will probably replace it for most of the jobs. Um, but I'll not get rid of my, to uh, my, uh, my uh, old dividing head, I'll keep that. So that's it. Uh, next job now then is to convert it to a dividing head and uh, see how we go from there. I hope you found it uh, interesting. Um, been a bit of a challenge really. Uh, you were either throw it away or buy a new one or... Anyway, I'm glad I did what I did, so... Thanks for watching anyway, as I say, and uh, in this moment in time, uh, stay safe and, and take care.